Hey guys, up here. I am long overdue to make a video about the Walther PDP. I've had one for a long time and I've put a lot of rounds through it. You guys have been seeing me shoot it and asking me to do a review, but I've been kind of dragging my feet because I wasn't totally sure how I felt about the gun. The PDP is another handgun in a long line of supposed Glock killers, but as I'm sure you guys have noticed, Glock is still on the market even if Gaston passed away, so it may have killed the wrong Glock. I think Glock competitors can be sorted into three threat levels depending on how close they come to taking the Glock throne. The lowest level are guns that just don't compete with the Glock at all. Those are all the guns that existed prior to about 1988, the guns that Glock killed when it first came on the market. Threat level 2 consists of most of the currently available double stack striker fired polymer frame handguns that are Glock alternatives. That's stuff like the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0, FN 509, or Beretta APX. These are guns where if you don't already have a handgun and you go to the store, you might compare them to the Glock and decide maybe I'll go with one of those or maybe I'll go with the Glock. Kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other. The third level of competition remains hypothetical in my opinion. That is the fabled Glock killer. That is a gun so good that even if you already own a Glock, you're going to go out and sell it and buy one of these hypothetical future handguns. Even if you've already got Glock holsters and Glock magazines, doesn't matter. It's still worthwhile to invest in a brand new platform because it's just that good. So which of these three threat levels does the Walther PDP platform manage to achieve? Walther actually sent me a PDP SD Pro Compact to review and it's taken me an embarrassingly long time to get around to it, but let's get into it right now. Today's video was brought to you in part by our sponsor, Venture Surplus. I'm sure I've extolled the virtues of military surplus on this channel multiple times before. It's a great way to get your hands on high quality gear and clothing for not a lot of money. LBT will happily sell you a chest rig for $450, but maybe it's better to let the US military buy it first and then wait 10 years before deciding they don't want it anymore, if you know what I'm saying. The other cool thing about military surplus is that you just never know what the US Army has stocked away in a Connex box somewhere. But rest assured, Venture Surplus will find it and act as the middleman to get it into our hands. If you're into this kind of stuff, I recommend that you bookmark Venture Surplus's site and check it every week or so, because you never know what's going to show up. Personally, I check in regularly to see if M81 Woodland Field Pants in size medium long have restocked, and unfortunately they haven't. It's probably been more than 20 years since the US military bought more of those, so the odds are getting slimmer. Check out the link to Venture Surplus in the video description. There's also a discount code. You can also check out the link to my Linktree page, and that will always have an up-to-date discount code in case you're watching this video later on. All right, thank you to Venture Surplus for sponsoring this video. A big thank you to you for watching this advertisement, and let's get back into the show. All right, that's enough theory. Let's actually talk about the gun. That refreshing sip brought to you by Diet Mountain Dew. Yes, I know it causes cancer, and no, I don't care. This pistol is a Walther PDP SD Pro Compact, although the word compact probably shouldn't be applied to any pistol in the PDP lineup. Compared to the standard PDP, the SD Pro model has the flared extended magazine well for faster reloads, the lighter, shorter flat face match trigger, and a threaded extended barrel for use with a suppressor. You'd have to be next level dedicated to conceal either of the SD Pros, so really they're duty style or competition style handguns. The standard PDP is available with compact or full size frames and slides, and so is the SD Pro version. The difference comes down to which grip size you find more comfortable and how long you want the slide. Standard magazine capacity on the compact is 15 rounds, standard magazine capacity on the full size is 18 rounds. The SD Pro Compact comes with an extended magazine well funnel and three 18 round magazines. These are not standard 15 rounders with extensions, they're actually 18 round mag bodies that have aluminum base pads on them that engulf the lower part of the magazine and prevent them from being over inserted. Not to fall back on Glock shillery, but this is one of the selling points of the Glock platform. You can use any extended length of magazine in any handgun because the magazine body has a dedicated over insertion stop system. Most of their handguns on the market don't have that, so if you insert a full size PDP mag into a compact PDP too forcefully, you're going to bust your ejector. The base pads on the 18 round extended magazines actually stops on the grip frame, not on any part of that extended funnel. So you can remove the mag well if you want, it makes the gun look better certainly, but it also allows you to use standard 15 round magazines from the PDP Compact. That's what I did because for the first year plus after the launch of this pistol, there was no way to get more of these 18 round magazines without buying a second PDP SD Pro. 
The 18 rounders are available for purchase now, but for the longest time, all you could do was get standard 15 rounders, or you could get like a 17 plus two mag that was supposed to go for a different pistol that would kind of fit, or maybe it was a 15 plus two. Either way, it's not the same magazine. They were ridiculously expensive. It was like 80 bucks a pop for those mags. I think they were intended for the PPQ match or something. It was bizarre. Walther unfortunately has multiple models of handgun that have stayed in production over the last decade plus that use a bunch of different types of magazines. Again, not to fall back on being a Glock shell, but you don't have that problem with Glock. They've been making one gun for 40 years and the magazines barely change. So the magazine well funnel, not to my taste. I find the gun more comfortable without it. I also think it looks ugly as shit, but I really like these 18 round magazines. I mean, the extenders are sick and you don't have to worry about breaking your gun when you slap one in. I know Clint Smith would see this as anathema, but I like the idea of carrying the gun in the holster with the flush fit magazine and then having all your spares be extended. It just feels right. Moving on to the next upgrade, the SD Pro has the enhanced dynamic trigger or match dynamic trigger or whatever. Everything on this gun has a weird acronym. This is an aluminum shoe flat face trigger. It still has the same safety blade as the stock PDP trigger, but this one's a little bit lighter and crisper. I actually really like the stock trigger on the PDP, so this upgrade's not a huge selling point to me. I can certainly shoot a little better and a little faster with it, but I also feel like it's a bit of a crutch sometimes. As for the third and final thing that makes this an SD Pro, the threaded barrel, I don't really like them. To me, suppressing handguns is a novelty. I can only think of very few scenarios where I would ever imagine myself using a suppressed handgun outside of just, you know, popping off a MAGA subsonic at the range and giggling and then taking the suppressor off and going back about my day. Suppressed handguns shoot like crap. That being said, if it's a feature that you want, a threaded barrel is pretty much non-negotiable. The SD Pro also includes a suppressor-specific return spring assembly you can swap in when you're using it with a suppressor. It's stiffer than the factory spring. I tested the gun a little bit using the suppressor spring without the suppressor attached just to see if it was still reliable, and it certainly seemed to be with regular factory ammo. It might reduce your reliability window somewhat, especially if you're using weak ammunition, but it shouldn't be an issue, although it does make the gun shoot noticeably different. So that's it. That's all the stuff that makes an SD Pro different from a stock Walther, and that's one of my first complaints with this thing. The SD Pro is supposed to be a suppressor-ready pistol, but it doesn't include suppressor height sights. This thing still has the exact same sights that come on the regular PDP. I replaced the sights with a set of taller sights because I like to have co-witness irons as a backup to my red dot, but I don't think Walther believes in that at all. All models of the PDP are optics ready and Walther is very much on board with the pistol optics train. The PDP has an optic adapter plate system. The gun doesn't actually come with any plates. Rather, when you buy it, you send proof of serial number over to Walther and then they will send you one plate of your choice and then you can buy more from their web shop if you want them. Considering the PDP is an optics ready pistol and Walther is pushing pistol optics so hard, I really would like them to have co-witness sights from the factory. But that's just my hang up. Plenty of people don't see the need to have co-witness sights on an optics ready pistol at all. The optics plate I chose to go with my PDP was the Trigicon RMR footprint pattern and I later bought the 509T plate to use. The optics plates are thick and robust, which is nice, but also the slide is milled very deeply. So even though there are adapter plates, the optics still sits fairly low. For a brief window of time, Walther was actually selling direct milled slides for the PDP on their website in a bunch of different patterns, including a direct milled 509T slide. Those slides, I believe, would not require aftermarket sights in order to get co-witness. Also, eliminating the optics plate is always nice. The optic sits lower, you have less screws and less interfaces to potentially come loose. But I think they were a limited time run, sold out pretty fast, and you can't get them anymore, so boohoo. I'm just gonna go slow fire. Yep. I'm going to try to alternate between center and uh, hostage. Got it. Uh, well, that was not a... Stop talking to yourself. But how will people know what's going on if I don't narrate? You put me loud... So a picture is worth a Stop thousand Stop talking words. over my narration, please. There we go. I got that one. All right, so what else can we say about the PDP as a platform? 
I think the ergonomics of these guns are superb. The grip is incredibly comfortable and has great kind of slightly rubberized texturing. The big chunky slide serrations are fantastic for slide manipulations, front and rear, particularly front if you have an optic mounted. The controls are excellent. Magazine release is not ambidextrous, but it is reversible. Big textured button placed extremely well. The slide release levers are nice and extended, good texture, but still somewhat low profile and they are ambidextrous. Interchangeable back straps. I have no idea which one is on the gun right now. Probably just medium because, wait, hang on, I think if I look close. Yeah, it's got an M on it. That's medium, so standard. Just in general, these are nice guns made very well with no stupid bullshit on them. So how do they shoot? Honestly, worse than most of the current double-stack striker-fired polymer frame guns on the market. The PDPs have a very large, thick, and heavy slide. They also have a slightly above-average bore axis, and so they're snappy. If you're used to shooting compact pistols in 40 Smith & Wesson, you're not going to think so because it's still just 9mm. But if you're used to shooting Glocks or even like 320s, MP 2.0s, a bunch of the other current crop of handguns, the PDP just feels a little snappy. Every single person I handed this gun to shot it and was immediately like, why does it recoil so much? Isn't it a 9mm? And the answer is, yeah, it's just sort of like that. This is not breaking news. I think every review of the PDP mentions the same thing. I have very little interest in shooting handguns suppressed, so I put a compensator on this gun instead. This is a Parker Mountain Machining JTTC Comp. These are fairly mild single port comps. They do a little bit to reduce muzzle climb, not as much as a lot of compensators on the market, but they also seem to have zero effect on reliability at all. Since I put the comp on there, I have about a thousand rounds through the gun, most of it cheap dog shit 115 grain, and I've had no reliability issues. Before that, I had about 2,000 rounds on the gun, total mix of cheap garbage and whatever else I could find, and again, no reliability issues at all. But this gun, as big as it is, and as heavy as it is, and as comped as it is, doesn't shoot as nice as a stock Generation 3 Glock 19. And that's even more annoying considering that a Glock 19 is substantially smaller and lighter than a PDP. The slide and overall dimensions are just thinner on a Glock, much more svelte. Even if you buy the smallest, slimmest version of the PDP, which is the F series frame, it's nominally the same size of gun as a Glock 19, but in reality, it's just much bulkier. So I don't see myself ever wanting to concealed carry a PDP. But as you can see, this gun is not set up for concealed carry. It's set up for some kind of hybrid theoretical competition slash combat pistol role. Finding a good holster for this gun was a little bit difficult. Again, not to fall back on being a Glock shill, but that's not a problem Glocks have. The PDP seems popular enough to have some staying power, so I'm sure the market will sort of catch up eventually, although nothing will probably ever overtake Glock. I got a Dara Level 2 duty holster to use with my SD Pro, and although I found it a little bit janky initially, it actually kind of grew on me. This holster's fucking weird. I usually like the Safariland Level 1 ALS holsters that have the little thumb lever for unlocking the holster, which is easily accessed from a firing grip. The Dara holster is a different design. Unlike the Safariland ones which lock onto the ejection port, this one is just a friction fit holster that has a level 2 retention hood over the back to keep the gun from flying out or being grabbed. Initially, I was pretty unhappy with it because the lever for defeating retention on this holster does not fall under the thumb in a firing grip. But what I figured out you actually have to do is build your grip and essentially just punch down. So you're not using the pad of your thumb to depress the lever. You're actually using your thumb knuckle and then it's super easy. I still think I slightly prefer the release of a Safariland Level 1 ALS because it leaves your thumb in a higher position, which is where you're going to want it for building a grip with your second hand anyway. But that is some real detailed autism that we don't have to talk about right now. If you really want a PDP, but you also really want a Safariland holster, I think RDR gear takes Safariland holsters for other handguns and modifies them to fit the PDP. Nice All right, on you. One. Neutralized. It's all right here, right? Yep. One. Neutralized. One. Neutralized. Up and out. Neutralized. Ground pounder. One. Okay, I'm dead. Neutralized. 
All right, that's about all I have to say about the Walther PDP and the SD Pro variant. Nothing super groundbreaking, so sorry it took this long to finish the video, but I kind of had the opposite reaction I did to the SIG 716i, if you'll remember. My initial reaction to that gun was so positive, I wanted to put some serious time behind it to make sure I wasn't like crazy or off the mark. The same thing happened for the PDP, but in reverse. Initially, I didn't really like it, so I wanted to put a lot of rounds through it just to see for sure. Ultimately, I think the PDP is a very good gun, but it's not a Glock killer, more of a Glock competitor. The SD Pro package I don't think is all that compelling unless you really want all of the components that come with it. In that case, the increased price of the SD Pro package adds a lot of value because it's cheaper than buying a base model and adding a threaded barrel, the enhanced trigger, magazine funnel, and a whole new complement of extended magazines. But as I've said, I think suppressing handguns is a meme. I think the stock trigger on the PDP is more than adequate for a carrier combat pistol, and I don't especially care for the extended magwell. So I would lean towards getting a regular PDP and using that extra cash to replace the sights and buy an optic. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you like this channel, please subscribe to it to show your support. Otherwise, how will I know? There are also links in the video description to my Subscribestar page where you can support this channel more directly, as well as a Linktree link for affiliate and sponsorship materials. Check those out if you're interested. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and I will see you guys next time. Hey. Hey, per machine. Whoa. Good morning. It's eleven thirty. Would you like to wake up? Maybe?